I think we're ready to go into the first champion select. There we go. It's going to be Raid versus Verdant. The bands are coming in hot. It's Akali and Twisted Fight. A little bit of the bands that we are used to see. Will we get to see like a Zeri or something more stable, like the Vega popping in into this meta as well? Uh, could also be something like Gwen popping in simply because currently she is still the winning card for top lane. The moment somebody manages to pick Gwen, especially even going as a blind pick for top lane, it is already like an option for you to go into the uh, mid to late stages of the game and just try to win it completely. And no, we're not going to see her anymore. She is a ban, I'm not surprised. I'm also vouching for Zeri to be in the bans as well. She is still incredibly powerful while well at patch 12.3 and here she comes, not available anymore. An extremely mobile and powerful AD carry, but we still have a very big pool of AD carries still available for us. Um, looking at Jinx, for example, looking at uh, something like Caitlyn, even after slight uh, nerfs, she's, seen, she's still powerful, but here comes Jinx. She, she could be answered by something like Aphelios or Jin, for example, but it's also the question of what's going to be the support for the bot lane. It's always that gentleman agreement when you see the Jinx <laughs> go for the Athelios and you know, okay, this is the bot lane that we get. I saw that little over on Nami and I thought maybe we could get to see like the Lucian Nami back in the oh. day, but it makes sense to bring in the Shin Zhao. You know you have Athelios open on the, the third rotation on this team and they could look into the, the Shin Zhao, probably a support if they want to get in an Enchanter or probably mm -hmm. something protective because you now no longer have the Thresh. So you can complement yeah. it with something like the Morgana, for instance, but obviously it's going to be the Aphelios. Like, there we go. Gentlemen <laughs> agree. Yeah, exactly. Jinx for Aphelios. Okay, nothing unusual. And Xinjiao is also one of the um, one of the junglers who is currently either a ban or a pick. Like, for example, in Ultra League, we never see him anywhere else. He's either banned or he's picked immediately. And you can clearly see why. It's just such a good tool for the team for the early stages of the game, but he still manages to stay on top throughout the game. Uh, wonder what it's going to be answered with because there are a couple of options. It could be listen and okay, there are no options anymore. That is just going to be listen. Okay, it doesn't reveal a lot from the team, so the competition is still open and wide. You get additional engage with the Nautilus, so it's going to be listen and Nautilus jumping into the back, allowing this thing to just pop off. So they're going to hide away that top laner and even the mid laner. It's obvious, probably going for something like a control victory still available as well, mm -hmm. or even other things. I don't want to see the Corky again on my life. No, so no, no, no. Let's no, move no. on on that one. Uh, oh. This is something that we have been seeing a lot on the NLC, FGG playing with the Rel. It is amazing. So the lockdown on Verton is also really powerful. Yes, I'm absolutely loving that pick of Rel. Not just for Aphelios, but just for the team in general, because it is just such a powerful engage tool. She immediately jumps in, and it's just an opening for the whole team to follow up pretty safely on top of whatever she decides to do there with the enemies. On the other side of the map, however, there is a possibility also for a good engage, even maybe from different angles, because as you said, Nautilus and Lee Sin could work nicely together. But let's see what we have in the more bands coming in, because we are now focusing the top lane and the mid lane, because they're still open for both teams. Ericsson is going to lose that assassin on the mid lane. LeBlanc would help a lot to go into the back line and destroy yes. that Aphelios. On the other side, there we go, the control champion with Syndra. Victor is still available, one of those control champions that is still on a meta. It's really reliable as well. You can play safely and deal a lot of damage with the enemy team. And if you have something like a Rail or something like that, alongside with the Shin Zhao, you want to take the Victor away, so it's going to be removed. Exactly. You can also go crazy and go a little bit of high risk, high reward and go with something like Zoe, for example, for the mid lane, because you will get the control, you would get the mobility. You would pay very dearly if you misstep anywhere, but here comes the lady, who is a much safer option. Oriana is still providing the control, if you think about it, a pretty reliable one. Also providing utility for the whole team, but she's just safer. You don't need to risk that much with her. You can try to rely on somebody else dealing anything with the enemy team. If I'm focusing on Verdant now, you have Dorian, you have the Rail alongside with the Thelios and the Shin Zhao. This is probably like a Nar on the top lane for that massive AoE Wombo combo. Ooh. And Nar is so powerful, but Anivia is going to come Oh my a goodness. Bit. Okay. I love it. Honestly, I absolutely love this pick. Usually, Oriana is being um, met on mid lane with something more, you know. Less controversial, okay, let's go in this way. So something like Victor or something like Syndra or something like Colt here again, something we don't want to see and will not see in this game anymore. But this is a very interesting mid lane here because it's going to be a lot of damage 
and a lot of movements around the mid lane all the time, but also opening very good options for the junglers from both teams to try to come in and have some early action on the mid lane. If I was going to play Aphelios on this matchup, I would be scared. So Camille yes. walks you up, Anivia deals all that AoE damage, and Lee Sin is going to kill you away. So <laughs> I don't want to be that person on the other side. Now, the ch challenge has been part up, and there we go, the Poppy on the top side. It's a Lee Sin, a Nautilus, a Camille trying to get into the backline, and Poppy is going to deny all of that. Exactly. I mean, you already have some denial from Xin Zhao, but here with Poppy, you have the absolute team of denying whatever is going to come from Raid, because that is such a good pick. I was looking at Renekton, and I was prepared to be disappointed, to be honest, because, <laughs> yeah, it's the pick that we see pretty often on the top lane whenever you're not exactly sure how exactly you want to counter whatever is on the enemy side. Uh, or we could go again with something like Na, but then you need to really play carefully around the Mega Gna form. But here, you're not limited by this. You just go in with Poppy and you're very safe. At the same time, you have the good disengage options. Question is, are you ready to engage into the opponent? And actually you are, because Xinja, who can do both engage and disengage very successfully, and Rel, and she will have a very nice follow-up thanks to that Oriana. So that is a very interesting and a very promising composition. And Ki is now has an amazing time as a Xin Zhao uh, in terms of jungle because you can ignore a little bit of that Poppy on the top side. Poppy mm -hmm. will be really comfortable versus the Camille. You don't need to win the yeah. line. You just need to not lose that line. And exactly. since you have a Lee Sin, you have a Camille, so that is a double AD. You can build a little bit of armor and be fine with that matchup. I don't know if you build the Hellbreaker on the Poppy. I mean, you know, it's Everybody the time in the these area. Days. There you go. I saw a, a, an Akali today building a Hellbreaker. I was like, what? why? But it was uncompetitive, by the way. I think it was on LPL, and I saw the Hellbreaker, and I got really confused, but it's Hellbreaker, so I don't know if Poppy's going to build it anyway, but uh, if she does, well, there's going to be additional defense, so you can play for that bot side with the Shin Zhao. And I got to say, I think this is a really good game for you, like, to start it off, Solari, because I was thinking, okay, the Jinx, the FL is the usual picks, but then you get a Nivea. Then you get a, a Poppy top side, at least in the jungle. This is really good to start up. Yeah, definitely. I'm very excited for this game. I really want to see how this Anivi is going to work in this particular game, and especially with her team, because it's not something we see pretty often being picked in the pro scene, but at the same time, she is pretty versatile, and you can play as a team in so many interesting ways around her. At the same time as the enemy team standing against Anivia, that can be a challenge sometimes, especially if the walls coming at you are placed strategically. But, well, it's all about the skill in this case. There's a little bit of a synergy that I want to see. Yeah. I don't know if uh, Raid Gaming are aware of that or maybe pu pulling it off in the middle of the team fight might be a little hard. But if you allow Camille to hook shot into a wall of Anivia, if Anivia is going to put up the wall in a strategic way, you can use the hook shot on that skill and then jump into the AD carry. So you might not have a lot of walls in the middle of a team fight, but you can use that wall to get to the back line. Actually, exactly. A perfect scenario for Camille would also to be the to get the mountain soul in this game because I would just prop so many additional walls on the on the rift. Some champions like uh, Camille and like Kiana, for example, and actually like not too, really love seeing something like that. But here, even if you don't get the soul, you still have the Anivia and you can jump around that pretty nicely. So yeah, let's get into the game as soon as possible because I'm so excited to see how it's going to look like. We have the bird's eye rift. Uh, we have the bird's eye view of the rift. Welcome back into Division 2. It is day 10, week 5. Let's get ready to rumble for another one. In terms of, uh, let me see, keystones, there's nothing to point out unless we look into Draconian with the Presti attack, Aphelios. So once he gets that rolling like the Presti attack, alongside with the CC from Winter's Rel, it's going to be massive damage on low fire. So. He needs to be aware now. Looking into the Anivia, we have the uh, the the Keystone. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I forgot about the 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 Keystone, the Lightning, the three hits getting the damage. Yes, the electrocute. 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 Thank you so much. I got a blank. I went blank on my mind. <laughs> You're welcome. On Anivia, is that something that you were expecting to see, or were you expecting something like a poking Keystone? Uh, there is always a choice between going Electrocute and going something like the Arcane Comet, but they pretty much do the same job for you in terms of the damage that you get throughout the laning phase. So it all depends on what other runes you want to fit in there. Maybe you want a little bit more sustainability, and then you would go definitely with something like Electrocute. So I can see the reasoning behind this choice, so I'm not really surprised. 
part is going to be the usual start. Both junglers are going to start on their respective blues. But there's a little bit of a leash, and immediately you see the bot line of Ray trying to push it up, low fire alongside with Peep, trying to get that uh, collapse in terms of a level, getting that early level 2 versus Winter and Draconia. That's going to be an engage, but it's going to be Nautilus taking way too much damage. Their bone plating is actually helping Winter to protect himself. And when you see the Rel jumping at you, you know there's a lot of shields, there is a lot of armor and magic resistance he's going to get as soon as he auto attacks you. So hard level one for right, but they at least got the push on the level one. Exactly. I mean, when you're standing with Nautilus, you might want to wait for a little bit longer and get at least to level two, something you do with Nautilus and Leona, for example. And this is where Rel has the advantage. If you're brave and bold enough, ooh, wait. That is a nice hook on Draconio, forcing him to go back, but no summoner spells being uh, burned away. So they push him back now. So it's one for one in terms of trades. Yeah, it's just an exchange of strength a little bit on the bot lane. Nothing unusual, but just to quickly finish with Rel, if you're brave and bold enough, you can already jump in starting from the level one, not waiting for any additional, uh, anything additional, to be honest. But here, in the end, you are in the disadvantage because you're stuck at your turret and you're getting the level too much later than your opponent, so you only need to be cautious about farming yourself up now as the AD carry. Valkyrie needs to be aware of that Shogath ultimate on Q Arcane Teddy, so be respectful <laughs> of that. Uh, obviously, yes. you want to get the first one. Well, if you want to consume the first Q, it's fine. The second one, that's the one you need to dodge. But I think he wants to go for the shitty, uh, shitty recall. Now uh, for Valkyrie, try to push it up really fast. There you go, and probably go back. He has the assistance of keys, so this is going to be a shit recall. Yeah, exactly. If you have the jungler somewhere nearby you in such the top lane as we see here, it is just a very safe option for you to go for it. As you said before we jumped into the game for the top lane matchup in general, yeah, you just don't want to die on the top lane as as Valkyrie. Because Camille will be strong as we go later in the game because she will scale up quite nicely. But the most important here is not to give her an easy start. As long as she doesn't snowball early on, you should be able to still deal with her. So you just stand there, don't die, you don't need to hunt for a kill specifically. Peep is fancying this flashing gauge, but Winter is aware that something is up. Getting the ward, Ooh. yeah, there you are. I got the damage, I know I got the <laughs> passive. Get away from that, Peep, you're not a ninja. So it pushes him away from the cove and allowing him. But look, look at the lane. Immediately, both junglers are heading into the bot side. The Born This Way is going to be spotted by that ward, but they're still going to engage, getting Winter. Immediately, there's a TP coming in from the mid line. It's going to be the Ariana trying to help him as fast as possible. It's the Flash, it's the Burn, it's the first blood in favor of Aphelios, and it's going to be Draconian with the first kill. Okay, that's four people on the bot lane in the end, getting splitting the assist between each other. But yeah, that's a nice distribution of the kill in the end, because the first kill goes to the AD carry. And wait, on this way, are you sure? Okay, fine, getting away. Respectable. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, yeah, you might want to feed this Aphelios up as early as possible. It actually works for both Jinx and Aphelios here, the AD carries who will profit very nicely from the very early kills. And here, Aphelios is definitely screaming thank you very much for that first blood in his hands. I gotta say, this is perfect for our uh, for the Valkyrie. Like the entire team of Verdant, they not only burn the mid lane teleport, they get the first blood as well. And then, if you look into the top side, Valkyrie has the lane frozen. It's going to be really hard for Arcane Teddy to actually approach the lane and take away this freeze. Like she, he has to commit. He tell it well. He went back, bought the Sheen. He's trying to freeze it, but both junglers are on the bot side, finally getting the vision of that uh, uh, first dragon. So. It's not going to be in the mountain, which is sad for the Camille, obviously, but let's see what's the soul. Do you want to bet on the soul? Um, we could try, but mm. honestly, I'm not sure think? with the souls lately. Whenever I try to bet on them, I'm not lucky, so... <laughs> okay, I'm going to say this is going to be an Infernal, so we get an explosive game, like, uh, really high for both AD carries. Oh, that could be very fun. That I would love it, honestly. Well, it's not going to be Hackstack at least anymore, because we already have the first Drake. So, we'll have to wait and see, as we always say. But for the top lane, Arcane Teddy is actually put, is being put in a pretty risky situation thanks to how Valkyrie is putting himself on this lane and thanks to the freeze he's trying to maintain there for most of the time. Because if you think about it, Camille Rita needs to try to hug the walls as much as possible. Because if there is a gank to happen on the top lane, if she's not around the walls to proper W, she can, here, sorry, she cannot really get away and then she can be stuck if she's pre-level 6. She, Actually has level six already, so 
speaking about that, that's not that scary for her anymore. But still, she needs to be very cautious about going into the mid part of the top lane, trying to do something about the minion wave there. Actually, thanks to Valkyrie, very nicely keeping the lane where he needs it to be. You can probably help me on this one, because yeah. I see a lot of poppies going straight up for the Divine Sunburst, and he's diverting away, going for the Bami Sinner. So is this uh, a chem tank being uh, built in for poppy? Um... I'm not sure, but honestly, I would love to see a chem tank on this poppy because if you think about it, the team could play f around it very nicely, and if they want to try to play the constantly engaging part in the uh, in the team fights as we go later in the game, that could be very beneficial here. Okay, Teddy, though, going for that call, and this is one of the champ, not the champions, one of the players that I love to watch when I'm watching Division Two. It's always about mm. Arcane Teddy, but I'll hold this one. Winter is getting engaged, so this is going to be the first kill for Wraith. Really well set up by Born This Way alongside with Peep. Oh, absolutely. I mean, both uh, both Peep and uh, Born This Way executed this very nicely. You can see both teams here trying to go for as safe kills as possible, not actually allowing the two undo skirmishes on the bot lane, but rather having at least the jungler coming in and helping. But in the end, it works for you. You get the kill and everybody survives in your team, so that's the only thing that... Wait, what is happening with the top lane in the meantime? I can tell you, are you feeling okay there? I was not expecting this from the matchup. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> this is going to be like, this is supposed to be fairly even. And Arkane Teddy, I was just saying, Arkane Teddy to me is one of those top players that I'm really excited to see play every single day. And uh, he's not doing a good job so far versus Valkyrie. Or probably it's the other side. Valkyrie is holding mm -hmm. this line. It's not easy to play versus a Poppy, obviously. And you're not used to that because you don't see a lot of Poppies on the top side. Yeah, exactly. It's not about Akin Teddy being good or bad, but wait, I need to hold my thought here because I'm he's just trying to Well the herald is taken, but he's still going in. Peep is so low in terms of HP. He's going to be the sacrificial lamb. They get the adult, obviously, but they lose the support in the process. But looking to the bot side, it is Jinx just farming away non-stop. Mm. They get the adult and they get an additional wave for Jinx. It's going to collapse, so I don't know if Draconio is going to lose at least two to three minions. Uh Whatever he loses, honestly, is going to be painful for him at this moment. Okay, not too bad, not too not painful. Bad. But actually, from the very beginning of the game, you could see Lufi really farming himself up against recording pretty nicely. I mean, yeah, you have Nautilus, so you're not really scared to try to go a little bit uh, around the lane to try to get the creeps for yourself. But still, he's doing a rather nice job. Is it going to be? It's better not be a tower dive. Okay. Valkyrie oh, puts himself executed. in a bad position. Arcane Teddy going for the shield. He's going to proc him against the wall. There you go, Arcane Teddy solo, but everybody takes a trip and Nis is alone in the jungle. While he sees his top player die, Arcane Teddy is on top of a ward. Let's see if wind becomes lightning. He's going to connect now. Keys is forced to go back, so this was a trip. Oh, Whoa. it is blocked. Nowhere to go. Oh, but Keys takes the kill versus Arcane. Actually goes for the double kill. Shit's out, just stacking it up and bringing it back home. Oh, and with a thumbs up, he goes there. But look at that, taking the back from the worst situation possible. You're stuck there. Everybody's going there to get a kill on you. But you managed to get out of this gloriously. Do you die in the end? Yes. Do you manage to get two kills in the meantime? Absolutely, yes, gentlemen. That was very nice. That is looking into the enemy and saying, you think I'm locking here with you? <laughs> no. no, you're locked in here with me. <laughs> Metal music exactly. theme pops on the background. <laughs> Montage of a kill. Double kill for this Shin Zhao. He got the Gore Drinker already. This is really early to get that. I think we have the replay, so guide me through this one. Yes, definitely. So here you can see an immediate problem that the ultimatum. Arcane Teddy is in tricky position because he doesn't have enough health already for to go in. And he knows that the enemy jungle is nearby. But he's trying to take this risk and trying to go for the reward because he has the jungler as well. And it's just, you know... At this point, it is the game of the junglers, pretty much. Managing to get away with the wolf pretty nicely. But then here, what exactly happened here? I'm Keys taking a lot of damage. But then Arkane Teddy flying in and immediately before he manages to any control on I'm Keys, he oh dies my. and I'm Keys just uses it to jump on top. That is beautiful. I love this fight so much. This Ooh. is now, oh, look at the bot lane, low fire going low in terms of HP, Keys trying to run away, the guard drinker is not working, and Toppy, no, the bird is the word, and Keys now just now running away, there's the dissonance from Ericsson trying to slow down the target, 
Peep was fencing another hook, but he's not allowed to do so. So 4 to 4, it is Raid coming back into this game after the kill versus Keys, but it's still tied up. Oh, yes, but still, we apparently have no brother moments in this game whatsoever, because look <laughs> at I'm Keys, he's trying to search for an angle here. Yeah, he does. Peep. Fancies oh. doesn't have enough protection, and giving this kill to low fire may actually be really bad into the late game. So they lose another dragon. It's going to be the ocean. I'm going to lose that bat. Ah. But it's still... Well, if you look into the ocean, this could be really fun, because if Oriana gets access to an ocean, low fire, going to get rooted. It's a double root. Winter comes in with the horse, gets the stun as well, and Draconian is going to get yet another kill for him. Oh, oh, I don't know where this game God. is going, man. And this is... <laughs> I don't know bomb. either. Yes, there is just so much action all the time throughout the whole map. But that was a very good moment right there in the bot lane to catch Lufa and Pi because Lufa was standing there with no mana already. So it's just a good moment you try to come in. The only thing is that you need to be very quick with the control because it's still pretty close to the enemy uh, turret, the safety of the turret. But they managed to prop both controls very quickly. So they managed to get out of this as winners. But. Both teams are actually going pretty equal so far. Five kills for both of the teams. The difference is in the dragons. I can see two of them already for the raid. So one more and it'll be the soul points already. Looking very promising. And the gold is almost dead even between the teams. That is incredible. And if you look into the mid lane, so I'll be going for the Everfrost. I was not expecting this. I was looking into something like the Leanders. When you get the Rel, you get a Poppy, you get a Shinzao. It's on the theme of the eyes and, and Nivea eyes and all that. <laughs> but I find it interesting. Well, you at least get more CC. And now, born this way, finally going to the top lane to help. I have him a dash of a feeling. Trying to fancy that kill. Comes in with the ultimate, but gets knocked against the wall. So the CC is going to apply. And this time, it's born this way. And Jeopardy is going to try and get away. Toppy is arriving on the top side. The bird will help them. Everfrost is available. We just discussed about this. Valkyrie is going to sacrifice himself or not. Or not, Poppy is alive on the top side. Shinzao is capable of running away with his life. Draconian gets yet another kill. It's a double for the bot side. Poppy takes way too long to die. And <laughs> Raid actually takes a, uh, an L for this one. Wait, is it, is it undone yet? No, no, don't go under the turret. That is enough action for now. Thank you very much, everybody. But that Poppy definitely took way too long today with all the shields managing to get the passive. Oh, no, it's not done yet. Keys wants to run away, but Lee Sin is on the hunt and finally gets the 1v1 versus the jungler and even takes the red buff to go home. <laughs> that is a nice reward if you think about it, not just getting the kill, but also stealing the buff from the enemy. So much action all the time. Oh my god, there is absolutely no moment to just step anywhere, <laughs> breathe in, breathe out, enjoy the safety at your lane or anywhere else. No. Welcome to the NLC, by the way. <laughs> oh, I love it here point. already. Ooh, the bot lane. Let's see what happens here. It is a tower dive. A very, a very bold one. A very risky one. And you have to pay for it in the end. Because if you don't execute such a tower dive clear enough, you get stuck. And it's really risky to tower dive something like Rel because she has just so much control in your hands. So you need to think not even twice, but a couple more times before you decide to dive under the enemy turret before standing there safely and having everything prepared to meet you face on agree with you 100 percent that is not a champion that you want to dive and especially putting the jinx that was really ahead in terms of the matchup at least in terms of farm trying to get a, a little bit of experience a little bit behind now because if you look into the farm he's now 400 behind which is not a lot but she was ahead but now looking into the top side look at this 5600 versus i mean 5000 for camille so it's a poppy versus camille and she's the head on the matchup. This is not something that I was expecting. Um, honestly, it shouldn't be too surprising to see. It's not, yeah, it's not too surprising to see Poppy actually feeling good on this top lane in the end. Yeah, hello. Nice to see you again. <laughs> But if you think about it, what is happening in this matchup? There is Camille who wants to hug the walls or any objects around her. And then there is Poppy. And what does Poppy do? What does she? Where does she want you to be? Walls. Exactly. So if you're quick enough with your Q as Poppy, you manage to catch Camille when she's trying to execute something around the walls, and you win this because you have control, you have the damage, in the meantime you prop your passive to get the shield on you, and then especially if somebody else is around you, something like your jungle, for example, who likes to be somewhere around the lanes, you're done, and the matchup is definitely in your hands. 
it's such an underrated champion poppy yes uh, especially yes. on the top side i used to be a poppy player myself but then i played versus darius on the top side oh. and the only thing that i got was traumatized uh, <laughs> yeah so oh. i'm really happy to see poppy back especially on the top side and not being traumatized yeah, exactly because <laughs> It's not a good matchup. I'm going to tell you this. It is not a good matchup. But uh, looking to Poppy with the Everfrost, diverting from the Divine Sunder. And I think both players are actually not doing the Hullbreaker. So yeah. nobody's doing the Hullbreaker. Apparently, that's a little bit surprising considering that we have absolutely a Hullbreaker meta currently in the game. But yeah. it's a nice, fresh breath of new items, finally. Thank you, by the way. Arcane Teddy and Valkyrie, you guys represent top planet i mean hullbreaker is just sad it's just sad yeah okay. it's uh, it's me, the same me. as having victor and Corky on the mid lane to be honest the same yes. level of sadness i'm a top player so yeah i i don't like hullbreaker because i don't want to build it but i'm forced to build it. it it's way too good obviously it's way too good yeah okay bot side yeah low fire draconian yeah. Draconian went in, obviously, for the shield breaker. So, getting a lot of sustain, getting the shield versus a team that wants to be on top of him. On the other side, it's going to be the Kraken Slayer. There's a lot of dive potential as well for Verdant versus Low Fire. Do you feel like Jinx is safe with the amount of CC that they have, Raid uh, team have, to build in a Kraken Slayer? Because this is a bold move as well. It is a very bold move, and usually you see Jinx going into something like Kraken Slayer when it's a safe matchup for her, or when she already ha gets some early boost on her lane. Here, it's a high risk, higher reward situation. You want to be able to cut through something that goes into you, but at the same time, if you are the one to be caught, if you, or if you don't position yourself nicely, you are risking a lot. You're pretty much risking to be caught and be dead on the spot. You need to be very cautious about how you run around in the team fight. Oh, and we have one. We have one actually. Or do we? A lot of them yes, are born this way because they want to fight for the dragon. So, injuring the jungler is the best idea. Obviously, he has the red buff, so he's going to be able to sustain himself. It is a Lee Sin, so he has a lot of mobility. He might try to steal the dragon anyway. But this is the most important dragon so far for Verdant because they need to secure this. They need to start putting themselves on the dragon board. Oh, that's a nice hook on Draconian. Getting two of them. It is Keys going down. The Ooh. shockwave hits three. It connects Valkyrie on the front line. The Inferno is spread across the river, but it's still a victory for Wraith at this point. Arkin Teddy on the back of the line, just looking to jump into Draconian, but it's a hard one. Winter is still facing the dragon, but they have no smite. They went in for three man knock. Oh, Arcane Teddy is going for the backside. Draconio is in danger. He has a lot of tools not to sustain himself. Pops the shield, but it's not enough. And it's the third dragon for Raid. Oh my goodness. Congratulations, Raid. That was an extended fight. It happened. Um... I expected it to end quicker, to be honest, a couple of times during it. <laughs> but in the end, we get what we get. That is beautiful. I love this game so much already. Wait, Born This Way is not done yet? No, he's done. Okay, thank you very much. So, what happened there? Apart from the apart from the third trade being taken. Oh, we have a replay. That is beautiful. Peep going in with that Q was absolutely incredible. But then two things happen here. First of all, the shockwave was rather on point. And secondly, I absolutely love the positioning of Arkin Teddy. That's something you want to do as Camille. And you have the perfect team composition to do it. You want to outflank the enemy team as much as possible. And just fish for those good angles to jump onto somebody. And here is Rel, and Rel was just absolutely incredible. I love it so much. Rel is just such, it's not an exactly underrated champion, but he's a champion who definitely deserves more love because of how good the engages from her are. But you really need to know how to use and maneuver that Rel, and obviously Winter is doing a good job. They were not able to get that uh, fight, which was an important fight because now it's sole point in favor of Raid. Exactly. In less than four seconds, we might just see the ocean soul. And there are quite a lot of champions who are going to benefit from that soul really nicely on the side of Raid. At the same time, if we manage to... if. Uh, if we manage to prolong that soul for as long as possible, you prolong the Elder Drake as well, and nobody gets the major buff so you can 
you can prolong the game, you can extend it for as long as you want, if you think about it. And have a very nice roller coaster, and also in the same time allow some champions on your team to scale up, and both teams could benefit from it. This is the perfect game for the Anivia. For Toppy, Archangel yes. Seth, with the ocean, that is way too much sustain for one man to hold. <laughs> the power is immeasurable. He also built in a Mejai, so it's Ooh. not only about sustain, it's also about a lot of damage that Anivia is going to dish. Exactly. If you think about it, she's doing so much in this game and she's going to do so much more. She is the utility. She is the support for Camille. She is the damage dealer and she can sustain a lot of damage if somebody decides to try all in her. Nobody is going to be able to all in her. That will have to be a long fight with Anivia and it's hard to have long fights with Anivia even without having something... Mm, what could it be? I'm I don't even know. Still. Production this if possible yeah. which is in terms of vision i want to see the vision that a uh, rate is building up on the map if you can press the f1 they had a little bit more but now if you look into burden because at the beginning of the game it was mostly about burden getting the deep vision but they're not comfortable right now to get that specific vision so they lost the control they were building throughout the entire game and i feel they're not as comfortable as they were at the beginning of the game like we we're looking into 10 12 15 minutes they had a lot of vision, but now they're mm -hmm. giving up on that vision. Obviously, the turrets going down is going to help them a lot for Raid to control that vision. Because in terms of towers, I was trying to look into the map. They only got, like, they have no turrets so far. Verdant needs to get turrets in order to get that deep vision. But they're not working on that. It's really hard for them to get ahead on this map and to actually feel comfortable on a lane. Yeah, they need to get the turrets because they would gain back some control. Oh, oh! Me. What a beautiful hook! Draconian got absolutely deleted by Peep. That was mathematically correct by Peep. A flash and then a hook and then just destroying whoever was unlucky enough to be in that spot. Pip is doing such a great job in this game. I mean, it is the battle of supports because both of them are incredible, but he here was just on spot. Oh, the ultimate from Poppy is coming in and oh, not hitting anybody. Oh. He wants to go for the dragon, but look at Arcane Teddy's damage is way too high. Low fire left alone on the baton. He has to go back. The shockwave pulls Valkyrie. Here comes the Super Mega Death Rocket blocked in by the jungler. But on the backside, you have Erickson getting deleted by the birds. Toppy with another kill. It's double for Arcane Teddy, actually. They might just go into the baton and only two members are alive. It is the bot lane. They cannot do anything as Wraith is going to take yet another objective. Exactly, and everything is just in their pockets right now with a fast recall, and they already have the outer turrets of the enemies taken care of, so they can just go in and try to clear at least one wave towards the inhibitor, or maybe take the inhibitor down if they're lucky and quick enough, and could try potentially to stretch it to two lanes, which could not work out, but let's see minion. how exactly Pip did minion. it. Oh, I'm dodging oh. that. The minion dodged the hook? <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that minion was the end for Draconium and for the poor, poor rail laying down on that lane. That minion actually <laughs> deciding the game, apparently. Actually, yeah, because you lose the AD carry, you lose the Venom as well. Oh, Valkyrie? Ah, you don't get, you don't get him, okay? It was nah. so funny, the minion was locking. Yeah, my mission is to protect my team. <laughs> I will die for my team. He sees Nautilus. Okay, I'm not dying for that. <laughs> <laughs> Steps away. <laughs> Lovely. Now with the oh better buff, what do you think they're going to do? Is, is this like a 1-3-1 one, one, or a 4-1? Um, They are in a position to do whatever they want, to be honest, in terms of how they want to split through the lanes. But most... I mean, they have Camille who can just go solo on the lane and just push it very far, very successfully and very quickly. And it will take exactly at least two people to go in there and stop her. And at the same time, you can do whatever you want on the side lane. Good idea to decide to stick to the two lanes on the bot side of the map because you can jump around them quickly. Oh, Winter! 
That is a good engage, but do they have enough damage? Arcane Teddy appears from behind, locks in the keys, and Shin Zhao is left for dead. Toppy blocks everybody. The shockwave is beautiful. Yes, it is, but the damage is just not there. Valkyrie is now forced to actually clean up the bot side, and while he's doing this, the mid lane is going to be demolished by Raid. The inhibitor is going down really fast, and Arcane Teddy is just pushing on those minions. They don't care about the minions. They want the objectives. They're going to take the second inhibitor as well, and Jinx is excited, looking for the Nexus turret. Ericsson has no shockwave. Valkyrie has the ultimate, but he's actually saving it to get a perfect team fight. I don't know if the team fight is going to be available because the first turret is already down. Ray is still fencing the second one, but they finally say, "Okay, we got enough. We'll go back and we'll buy something." You got more than enough, gentlemen. Maybe it's time to step back for a little bit, breathe in, breathe out. Be prepared for the next major objective on the map, because you could try to go and take the Elder Drake, or you could try to go for the second... Uh, no, just thumbs up and not jumping in. Or you could try to go for the second second Baron and just be happy, because you have this map in your hands right now, and it would take a lot from Verdant to do something about it and try to defend their base and get anywhere on the map at all, because they're in a very tricky position right now. They can think of what happened again and uh, it was a good start, but it wasn't enough, right? Yeah, I mean, Winter is still doing an incredible job, an exceptional job by jumping in and doing exactly what Riley's supposed to be doing. And the shockwaves are still on point, but then there is a lot of sustain on the raid side already, and it's really hard to get through it because, unlike Raid, there is no Kraken Slayer on this particular Aphilius, on this ADC right now. He's going with the Immortal Shield Bow, if my memory is correct, which could work but it doesn't exactly work in this particular situation you're not, you just don't have enough damage as a team to cut through right and they are using it to the fullest now defensive position turtle stands for the team of verdant while the outer turret is going down remind yourself there's not a single turret so far for Verdant. They get a pick, but it's no, not no. an easy one it is arcane teddy buying as much time as he can pops up the the stopwatch and they get the shutdown but look at the base the base is being shut down that's the third inhibitor how can you protect yourself from the enemy minions just coming in hot they have the the soul as well oh they fancy it winter doesn't have the ultimate so there's no way they're gonna get the perfect lockup uh, they don't want to jump in or they shouldn't want to jump in right now. That's not a good position for them. They would be stuck in the jungle where Arkane Teddy could have been very useful actually for raids, but even without him, they still have a chance to just shut them down completely. Thanks mostly to Topi, to be honest. But yeah, as you said, how can you really defend your base if it's almost naked Nexus you have there standing with just one turret between you and the scary, scary enemy team going <laughs> your way? You have one turret, one dream, and one <laughs> fighting chance at this point. Arcane yeah. Teddy has teleport. He's going to use it on the bot side. So this is going to be the last collapse. Last stand for Verdant. They either do it, or they're going to fall on this game. A really important game, because if they actually win this, they tie up with Raid on the standings. And it's week five. Remind yourselves of that. Day 10, they need to get as many points as they can if they want to look for the playoffs. Okay, turret is going low. It's still at half HP. They have a little bit of time. Anivia doing wonders. Oh, there we go. The wall of Anivia pulling in peep. It's Nautilus. They're coming in. Keys is going to pop his own ultimate. And there we go. Winter goes down without getting the ultimate. And Draconian tried to get the Graviton. Tried to get the Sniper as well. Almost brings Arcane Teddy to the knees. But it's going to be the Nexus to Chambles as they're going to push in for yet another victory for Raid as they take their fifth victory. And now they're going 5-5, five, five, a beautiful number and a beautiful game to conclude this number for them. Congratulations to Raid and honestly, what a joy to my eyes was this game right now. I'm just so delighted to be on NLC. If all the games are going to look like that, I want to be here more open. Oh, I hope you're back as well. Like, you did a really good job and this was a yeah. really good game as well. Yes. Really exciting. It went back and forth. Like, the, the ping pong that I was uh, bringing to you guys, it was the game, like the ping pong. At the beginning of the game, yeah. it was Verdant, then it was Raid Gaming, then it was Verdant, and at the end, finally, getting the Raid Gaming, uh, the victory. I mean, it's all about macro, I guess, because not a single turret 
went down for Wraith Gaming. No, there was one. There was one on the top lane. Oh, actually. it was? Yes, oh, it was. And it was you. even the objective bounty on this turret. But it did help much in the end. Actually, yeah, I wanted to elaborate on this point of yours about the turrets. They really had to go and try to go for these turrets because, yeah, they could have gained back at least some control over the map and some vision. But also, they could have taken some gold for them from the objective bounties. But unfortunately, didn't work out for them in the end. I was just looking into something uh, to see if my camera was okay. Because it was really pixelated on my screen. So, okay, yeah. okay, I'm back. You know, I'm getting internet stuck is sometimes, a weird but thing. it's good. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Remote casting at its finest. It has its own surprises. Well, I'm not at a hotel. I'm at the studio, so it should work Ooh. fine. I don't know what is happening. Probably it's my fault, by the way, guys. I don't it's know. my fault. <laughs> okay, I hope you guys at home are having a blast on this uh, day 10 of Division 2 for the NLC. Obviously, this is the first game of many. So we should probably take a break before we do, we jump into the second run, right? Absolutely, that would be lovely. Let's make a quick break then, allowing yes. you to get some water and all that, and I'll see you soon, guys. 